Special forces of Ukraine's main intelligence directorate have recaptured from Russian forces a key area, the village of Kruglyakovka and its surrounding area, near Kupiansk city in the country's eastern Kharkiv region. The main intelligence directorate reported on Friday that the operation to regain control of the village lasted a week, from October 7 to October 14. The enemy resisted and tried to counterattack, but was defeated and driven out of the village, the agency stated. The village was recaptured as a result of joint operation by special forces of the Brotherhood Unit of the Main Intelligence Directorate under the Defense Ministry, with the support of paratroopers from the 77th Brigade. As a result of successful offensives launched by Ukrainian forces, the Russian army suffered heavy losses. More than a platoon of Russian military personnel was killed and captured, according to the agency. As a result of the operation, Russian troops were driven out of the populated area, and the routes of movement of the occupiers were mined. The news of liberation of Kruglyakovka in Kharkiv comes as Russia has been making steady gains in the east of Ukraine. Earlier this week, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pressed for immediate invitation for Ukraine's joining NATO. When asked whether there are people in the Russian elite who would like to eliminate Putin because they believe that life will be better without him, Russian political scientist Mikhail Scheitelman answered this way, I think that all these forces, which certainly exist, forces that think that, yes, they will be able to live better only after eliminating Putin. Yes, they need to negotiate with the West, who see that Putin has weakened, that our invasion of the Kursk region is a signal that Putin has really weakened. Putin was unable to use the nuclear doctrine. He was unable to do anything. If Ukraine calmly introduces troops into the Kursk region and the Russian army flees, then this, of course, weakens him among the elites. Mikhail Scheitelman said in an interview with Alexei Goman, a political scientist named the best moment for a revolution in the Russian Federation. I don't think that such a thing can happen smoothly and out of nowhere. Like, we thought and thought and finally came up with it. It doesn't happen that way. Revolutions don't happen in the format of we thought and thought and finally came up with it. Revolutions, like conspiracies, happen when the moment is ripe, when it's impossible to do otherwise, when, as Lenin said, yesterday was too early and tomorrow will be too late. This is a key story. There must come a moment when yesterday was too early and tomorrow will be too late. The first such revolution tried to happen more than a year ago when Prigozhin did it. In June 2023, the march on Moscow took place. The revolution failed. This is normal, but it showed this revolution that it can be done, the writer explained. Then Mikhail Scheitelman, with irony in his voice, drew a parallel between the events in the Russian Federation and the revolution as a phenomenon described by Lenin. As it is said in my favorite article by Lenin, this was not yet a movement of the masses themselves. The proletariat, the only revolutionary class, must stand at their head and lead millions of peasants to open revolutionary struggle. We have not reached this stage, but the Decembrists awakened Herzen. That is, the Decembrists are Prigozhinites, they awakened someone else.
Russian troops are dropping aerial bombs on Russian citizens remaining in the country's Kursk region where Ukrainian army has captured swathes of land, Ukrainian telegram channels reported on Thursday. One of the telegram channels has published a video of what appears to be the aftermath of the bombing of Sverdlakovo village in the region. The channel reminded that one of the Russian bombs has been dropped on Lebedevka village in Sudzinsky district in Kursk region, adding that the family with a two-month-old baby and several other children live in the area. This was not the first reported case of Russians bombing their own citizens in Kursk region. In late August, Ukrainian media reported that Russian forces launched 17 airstrikes on their own settlements with 27 guided aircraft bombs in a day. Moreover, Commander of Ukraine's ground forces Oleksandr Pavlyuk claimed on August 31st that Russian troops were wiping the Ukrainian captured town of Sudza in Russia's Kursk region off the face of the earth. Ukrainian armed forces launched a surprise incursion in Russia's Kursk region on August 6, which became the largest attack on Russian territory since the start of full-fledged invasion of Ukraine in February 2022.